Hi everybody! So, I'm doing another video. Um, I'm going to go over my trimming tools, my favorite ones. I will explain a little bit why I use the particular tools and also some of the tools I use I wouldn't recommend for very beginners, beginners who haven't really had a whole lot of experience with trimming. Um, some of the tools I really recommend for a little bit ways down the road once you know what you're doing and you've had a little bit of practice under your belt as far as trimming pieces go. I do have some tools that you could use as a beginner but some of them I would more recommend when you you know a little bit and the reason why I use them is more of a time saving thing. I don't get a ton of studio time. I am also a mom and um, I have a child under five and a child who just started school so, so my studio time is limited and a lot of these things I do is to save me time and also as I said in my last tools video, I'm not a huge fan of trimming, so anything that makes the process easier and faster for me, I'm usually going to do as far as the trimming is concerned because it is not my favorite part of the process. Um, I don't mind glazing, I love throwing, carving probably my favorite thing to do, but trimming, I just, I don't know. It's really kind of funny because I really like carving but don't like trimming. Uh. But anyways, so let's start off with just my basic trimming tools. The tools that I use to just trim off the bottom, all the extra clay. For me, I tend to do trimming at a little bit softer leather hard stage just because my B-Mix is super picky about handles. So I tend to do the trimming when it's a little softer, probably softer than I would recommend for a beginner. Same amount of dryness between the piece I threw and the handle that I'm putting on it. And so to make sure that they're as close as they can be to being the same as when I apply it, when I put the handle on and, and stick it there, it's just easier for me to do it when the clay's a little bit softer. Because it is really hard to attach a handle to be mixed and have it turn out alright if the handle is drier than the piece or if the piece is drier than the handle is. And along with that, I do pull my handles. So I have a bucket of water, have the piece of clay, get it really wet and just you know um, pull down the handles that's usually how I make my handles and usually I will pull all my handles first then trim the pieces a little softer leather hard and then by the time I'm done trimming the pieces the handles are usually about the same dryness or close to it so I will either attach them then or I will wait like a day for the handles just to get a little dry enough to be able to attach to the piece correctly and have it stay um, without you know all the cracks and stuff like that. That's kind of a little bit of my process for attaching handles. Now as far as actually trimming the bottoms go, um, I'm going to talk about the tools I use. I have, um, I think it's called a ribbon tool and I'll put links down below if you're interested. This is my ribbon tool. It has a square end and it has a circle end and I do use both ends when I am trimming. Um, I will switch back and forth between the ends. I'll explain kind of how and why I do end up using both ends and why I like having a rounder end and a square end. My other tool is this this bigger trimming tool right here. Oh, there we go. Um, and I actually do really like the shape of this too and I will also explain why. So as far as this ribbon tool goes for trimming, I really really like the round because I like putting feet on my mugs. I just feel personally no judgment otherwise, but for me personally, my pieces don't feel complete unless they actually have like a foot on them. I'll actually show you guys really quick. So, as you can see, I actually like carve in the foot onto the piece. Um, and so the rounded end really helps me get that shape that I'd like so that when it sits, it's not sticking out a bunch. It kind of feels like it's actually part of the shape of the mug. Um, so you actually feel like it's just kind of continuing the the organic feel of the mug but still looking like it's finished because for me like I feel like my pieces just don't look finished if they don't have a trimmed bottom so occasionally um, I won't trim the bottoms but I probably say about 80 90 percent of the time they will have a trimmed bottom and I use this uh, the rounded side to kind of just carve into there Let's see if I can show you like you know like that And then the rounded side also comes in handy for when I start trimming the middle. So a lot of times the tool will have a hard time gripping enough to get that clay out of the middle. And I've found occasionally when I'm doing the trimming that this part, the middle, will be higher 
than the rest of the bottom trimmed out. So I found that using the rounder part of the tool kind of helps catch that clay in the middle to get it coming off at the same thickness and making your bottom kind of the same thickness all the way through from the middle to the outside. And this particular side, I guess I should say it's more of a triangle, isn't it? <laughs> but anyways, the flatter side to kind of just make it an even, smooth surface. So for those of you guys who don't know, I do a lot of carving, sgraffito, things like that on my pieces. Don't always, but I would say probably about 70% of my work ends up having sgraffito on it. So it's really important for me, at least, to have that surface super smooth and clean and easy to carve. I find this piece is really, really good at making sure you don't have like lines in the clay from trimming, making sure the bottom has like not a lot of lines and stuff is kind of a smooth surface. Um, also that makes it so that you're not getting a lot of burrs and things like that on your pottery so that it's not going to be scratching up people's tables and stuff when they go to use your mug. This guy, I don't use as often. I will say that the one room tool I showed you earlier, the one I use the most. But anyways, this one. I really like because when I have the rounder, thicker pieces, it gets rid of the clay faster. I find that it pulls off more clay and wider amounts of clay and like a, a bigger surface area comes off while you're using this kind of, of piece. Um, I don't do any of my finishing or anything with it. It's usually the tool I use first when I'm trimming like bigger rounder pieces. Um, I'll usually take off all of that extra clay that I know is in there and then I'll go back over it with this one to smooth it out, this one to you know get the foot and everything the right shape. Um, and get all of that clay out of the middle of the foot. So those are the two tools I probably use the most for trimming. The other tool I'm going to say, it does cause drama in the pottery world for whether to use it or not to use it. Um, so I will say that like a lot of potters don't recommend it. A lot of potters don't think that you should be using it. It's not as good of a tool. Um, I will say it is very expensive for um, for what it does and stuff. So like. I, I wouldn't say it's a must have in your studio and the reason why I use it so much is is a time saver for me because I don't have a lot of time in the studio and again I'm not a big fan of trimming so I kind of go with what gets it done faster. <laughs> this is the Giffen Grip. So you can see it's got these things that kind of hold the piece in the middle and then it has other attachments. Um, I have it facing this way right now because I haven't I've just been doing um, like little saucers and stuff, so I haven't needed the other part. But you can take it out, turn it around, and then it has like little little pieces like this that um, will hold your piece in place if you have like a taller piece as opposed to a wider piece. The thing with this is I don't recommend you getting one if you don't have the extra money to spend, if you've just started trimming, because um, like I said, it's a very expensive tool. Um, the reason why I have one is because it was a Christmas present, honestly, <laughs> as far as, as tools go. Um, I probably wouldn't have bought one for myself. Um, I did get it as a Christmas present, but it has been a huge time saver for me and I do use it a lot, so I thought it only fair to mention it. So the Giffen Grip, like I said, it just kind of centers your piece um, so that you can trim it faster. You don't have to sit there and put the clay logs on and try to make sure this in the center. It does a lot of that for you, putting it in the center. The caveat is, is you have to really know how to trim. You have to to be pretty confident in whether you know the piece is centered. Um, if you have a piece that's a little wonkier, this makes it very hard to use. Um, that's kind of why I suggest only using it if you have got a lot of trimming under your belt, got a lot of throwing under your belt, like you know what you're doing. And then like the thing is too, is it puts it in the center to what it thinks should be in the center. And your pieces will not always be as centered as they need to be for a skiff and grip to work properly. Um, so it is really kind of a trick of knowing whether or not the giffen grip is actually getting it to its center. And whether the bottom is centered enough to be able to trim. And I have pieces, I wouldn't say frequently, but I do get pieces that it doesn't work on. And a lot of times I'll have to go back to doing the clay lugs so I can make sure to get it in the, the part of the wheel that it, the bottom is the most centered for. 
because you know things happen when you're throwing you'll get an air bubble or you'll get you know uh one of the uh, part of the wall will be a little thinner than the other or you know things like that happen you know we're all human and we make mistakes and so um this really shows you um all the mistakes you had while throwing the piece as far as like whether it's centered or not and whether you can trim the bottom i mean like if you're really trying to save time and you have that as a, a constant problem you're dealing with um, as far as me and being a mother it is a problem i deal with on a regular basis i do ha don't i don't get a lot of studio time so it does save me a lot of time as far as the but i have been throwing for like 10 plus years and trimming for just as long um, I do have a little bit more experience as far as doing pottery goes, so it, it's a lot easier for me to be able to use this. I hope it helped you kind of figure out what you want to use, what you don't want to use. I know there's a ton of different kinds of trimming tools out there. I figured I would share my experience, what I like using, and maybe it could help you. There are other potters on YouTube who use vastly different trimming tools than I do. I am left-handed, <laughs> so me not liking trimming was a lot because of that because of being left-handed and trying to figure out the wheel rotation because i was taught to throw and trim and all that right-handed but being left-handed person made it a little bit more complicated um so that's kind of why trimming and i haven't always gotten along and i will usually do the carving and stuff with my left hand um i have gotten better at using the trimming and doing the trimming with my right hand um, but it has been a bit of a process and so these are the tools that I found really help me and make it easier for me to do that part of the process when it doesn't come naturally to me so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it